you feel like there's this weird preconceived judgment about who Justin is versus... Sometimes, really more with like social media. I feel yeah. like in person everyone kind of understands, but you get trolls online, so. No, I don't think like... they actually believe I'm Bryce. Hey guys, it's Sinead checking in here from Clever HQ with a very special guest. We have Justin Prentice from 13 Reasons Why. I feel so blessed and lucky to have you here. Thank you. Oh, right wow. after season two dropped, like yeah, hot just, off the just press. came out. It's new on everyone's minds, I guess. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah it's exciting. All right, so before we get started, because we have so many questions for Justin, I want to let you guys know that we are going to dive deep into spoilers. So if you have not caught up with season two, this is your official spoiler warning. If you have, like I have, I binged it in about 48 hours. I wow. was exhausted afterwards, like actually exhausted. I'll say, yeah. So I'm barely catching my breath, but I have to know like for you, upon reading this, the season two script mm. right away, first of all, like this season, we really, we really focus on Bryce a lot. Yeah. And we kind of explore his mindset and mm -hmm. the twists and turns of the way that he thinks. But for you, after reading the script right away, like, what's your first reaction? Well, you know, we, we get them in blocks. So the way we film is we'll do, like, episode one and two within mm -hmm. a month span. And then we'll do three and oh, four. Oh, I see, we'll I do, see. So we, we get scripts kind of two at a time. Okay, okay. So, so they sort of string us along. So we're also wondering yeah, yeah, what's going to yeah. happen next while we're filming. And your reactions are probably a little bit more organic and you can't think too much about it. Yeah. Yeah. Which is great. It's it's kind of neat. It's cool. And we'll have our, our big table reads and we'll all kind of like discuss afterwards and be like, what? This is a crazy plot mm -hmm, twist. Mm -hmm. What's going on? It's fun though. It's really cool. Yeah, there are a lot of nooks and crannies and turns and surprises. It was a fun read. Yeah. I hope it's as fun to watch as it was to read for the first time. Um, but yeah, we do. We, we see a lot of different sides of Bryce, which I think is really fun to play yeah, with in it's, season two. I mean, you're very good at thank, playing oh, evil. You. Very, you. very good. But you guys, he's actually really nice. IRL, trust. Um, yeah, we had a great walk. We got you a water. He's really it's nice. Great. Nothing great. like Bryce. Do I you, try not to be. Oh yeah. well, that's good. You yeah. Know? Do you feel like you have to tell people that? So yeah. I think they just like screwing with like me. Like screwing with you. Yeah. yeah. But I can imagine that must be difficult for you as well. Like, how do you prepare to play that level of like? dark and evil. It's interesting, it's, it's really funny. So I talked to my mom on the phone all the way here actually. She just finished season two, I think like last night. So she was calling me like screaming and mm -hmm. crying yeah. and elated and yeah. all of this, just the range of emotions right. that only a mother can have. That must be really hard for a mother too because one, she's reacting to the actual show and what happens in the last right. episode, but also like, Seeing you like shine so much in season two, she's probably like, I don't know. My emotions. baby, but also he's a horrible person yeah. and I'm conflicted and I don't know how to feel. Uh, yeah, so it was interesting playing Bryce because it was interesting seeing her perspective because, mm -hmm. you know, I've been acting for 10 right. years now out here in Los Angeles and I keep her updated, you know, when I can, if at all possible. So she's been with me through the ups and downs and she's, she was just so excited to watch. She's like, Aww. This is amazing, because I remember when, as an actor, you had a hard time being angry, because you're just the southern boy with not an angry bone in his body, just sweet and whatnot. And I remember you had a hard time crying, and we get to see that scene. And so uh, it was it was difficult, but um, I guess I've come a long way yeah. you know, from a decade ago when I started. That's awesome. Well, good for you. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So is there is there one scene, when you look back on this now, because your mom is right, there is a lot, there's a lot happening with your character. So is there one scene that you look back and you're like, man, that was so hard to film? You know, I think logistically, mm -hmm. the like, the sports stuff, any of the active scenes. Oh, you know what? No, I think probably the hardest scene to film was the scene with my mother. I think it's, it's early-ish on in the season where I'm making a protein shake in the blender and oh, she's yes. behind me just yes. giving me the eyes. From a logistical standpoint, for continuity purposes, I have to put the exact same gr ingredients into the blender <laughs> on the same line yeah. every time. But you don't have all that much time to prep in the space before you start filming. Right. So we show up that morning, we go through hair, makeup, and wardrobe, and all that. And then, you know, you have one or two rehearsals before we start filming the scene. So I'm like, ah, I'm like nervous about mm -hmm. screwing it up. And... So those are things that like the audience doesn't think of. Right, something that you guys would, you right. would never cross your and mind also, that that was hard to film. No, but... of course not. At that point of the show too, that's like when Rice's mom is starting to realize that her son's pretty effing messed up, yeah, you Yeah, know? exactly. She's just glaring daggers and I'm trying to pretend that everything's fine. So yeah. it was a fun scene emotionally and then also, yeah, just with the ingredients. There were a lot of props in that scene. So, so funny, that's yeah. so funny. Now that you've seen it all, 
and you've kind of seen the reactions to it. Obviously, after the first season, there was some backlash. Mm -hmm. And now after the second season, again, there was some backlash. Yeah. With When you're tackling such sensitive subject material, right? Subject matter. Um, of course, there are going to be people that just don't agree those kinds of things should be portrayed on screen. Sure. So where do you kind of stand? Like, what's your opinion on, on the backlash? And how, how's that for you guys as a cast, you know? You know, I, th I think we try and take it all in stride. We have a, a unique opportunity of sort of, sort of being on the front line of all of these controversial issues, mm -hmm. uh, which is a really cool thing. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to come with, bla with backlash. But I think at the end of the day, our show kind of goes into uncharted territory. You right. know, we don't shy away from these sort of scenes. And I, th I personally think that's a great way of tackling these issues because we don't ease off of it. And, no. and it's not easy to watch, but it's also not easy to go through in real life if Absolutely. you're experiencing these Absolutely. things. So I personally think it's the best way to portray it. Um, at the end of the day, what I always say, you know, controversy, backlash, people are talking about the issues. Mm -hmm. and, and that was one of the reasons we set out to make this story in the first place. Right. Uh, so it's a beautiful thing. Whether people agree with the way we show it or they don't agree, it doesn't matter. The fact that people are arguing and debating and talking about Absolutely. these focal points of society that need to be addressed today, I think is an awesome thing. Yeah, because it's like one of those things that we're getting more comfortable talking about. Things that seem awkward, but they're actually just part of real life. Exactly, totally. and they're happening every day. And uh, and it's cool. I, I, I love any sort of feedback because it means people are talking. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so as a cast too, like what's that dynamic for you guys? Is it one of those things where you've just filmed these like horrifically daunting, serious, crying scenes talking about every controversial issue under, under every single category of controversy? And then you guys are like, hey man, like what's up? Yeah. Hey, I yeah. will see you later. Actually, it's... Don't talk to me till tomorrow. It's even more of the opposite. It's like, hey, we just had this really traumatic scene with all of us. Let's go play beer pong. Like, okay, it's like yeah, the complete other side. That's good. Let's go be buddies. Let's go have fun. Let's go have a dance party, whatever it is. Maybe like a group hug. We do. We hug it out a lot. That's we, a, lot of, a lot of hugs on set. Who's the most likely to initiate a, a group hug? I want to say probably like Ross. <laughs> who plays really? Zach Dempsey, yeah. Aww. It's like a giant puppy dog. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> I love that. All right, so let's get to know Justin, okay? Okay. I did some research. Oh. And I did see that you have been working with a couple of outreach programs, which is so cool. So tell us a little bit about that and why you decided to get involved. Yeah, you know, just in playing the character and doing all the research on it, you realize how much of an epidemic rape is, sexual mm -hmm. assault mm -hmm. is. Um, and and I have sort of this unique platform with the show to kind of speak out on things and, and have Q&As and whatnot. So I, I do those when I can at, at colleges, at campuses. I just worked with uh, Katie Kessner of Take Back the Night and Respect My Red. Did a Q&A at one of her events and kind of learned from her just in the back sort of like taking yeah. notes. Because she's, so cool. she's been speaking for you know decades on these issues now. She was kind of on the front line of it in the 90s. Yeah. Uh, the first advocate uh, speaking out against date rape. So uh, yeah, there are a lot of veterans in the industry who know way more than I do. So I try and learn where I can. So That's that awesome. When I go out, I can you know I guess do my part in some way. Yeah, definitely. Especially coming from your character as well. You know, it's also important to show your support as well. You know, because you are tackling issues that real people have dealt with. So because you are tackling an issue that people have really dealt with in real life, mm -hmm. um, how do you give the idea of rape and sexual assault the dignity that it deserves because it is a real life issue while also just acting? Just uh, lots of research, I think, lots of phone calls, trying to get experts' opinions on everything. Yeah. Um, psychiatrists, um, Alexis Jones, who uh, is a big advocate for sexual assault prevention mm -hmm. in like locker rooms yeah. for college yeah. campuses and, and high schools. Uh, just uh, lots of opinions, piecing it all together to make sure it's realistic and we kind of portray him realistically right, so he doesn't right. seem disconnected from humanity or reality. Mm -hmm. um, we wanted people to be like, oh, I experienced this, Absolutely. or I know that person, and, uh, and I've gone through similar situations. We wanted to make it relatable and, and it took a team, but yeah, just lots of lots of experts, lots of people who know more than I do. Yeah, that's really <laughs> awesome. All right, so once you uh, leave the set of 13 Reasons Why, mm -hmm. what do you go do? Besides like take a deep breath. Sometimes play beer pong. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Drink responsibly. Yeah. I, all kinds of things. I'm a big outdoors guy. Um, love getting out to nature. Kayaking, uh, camping, mm -hmm. mountain biking. I'm sort of all over the place too with, with tastes. Sometimes it's ice skating, sometimes it's 
hitting the slopes, which I haven't done in a really long time. But I don't know, just that's awesome. anything and everything. I went skiing once. I fell really bad and never did it again. Right on. That's super fun. Yeah. Great. Right yeah. on. It's not. It's not the best. Zero perseverance. Fall once, it's over. It was. It was a really bad fall. Okay. Okay. <laughs> not anti-perseverance. Okay. No, it was really bad. I'm pretty sure I blacked out. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it was one of those. Then maybe you know there are other sports. Yeah, other I might still, I might still have some sort of like, like post-traumatic stress disorder from it. We won't talk about not it. Not gonna lie, Next not question. gonna lie. We'll move on. All right, so moving on to season three, okay? Okay. So this season we met Chloe. We did. And we kind of got to see Bryce and Chloe's relationship unfold. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the show, you drop a bombshell. You're leaving. Bye. You're like, there's a bad guy. He's here. It's cool. And of course, he is the worst. He's the absolute worst. Yep. Um, and that last episode is like one of the most it's her like horrifying things we ever see. A lot going on. Last and episode. a couple mm -hmm. of fan theories. I want you to give your take on. Okay. Okay. First fan okay. theory. One, your girlfriend's your girlfriend's expecting. Right. right. You guys yep. did something, and now there's a baby. Now there's a baby. Yeah. So now there is this issue of teen pregnancy, and mm -hmm. that is something that hasn't been tackled yet in 13 Reasons Why. But it is such an important issue. Sure. So one, you know, it's it's amazing that it could go that way, and we right. will explore that. And also, do you feel like that might be the reason that Bryce has to stay? It could. That's an interesting point. I also think in terms of breaking through the monster and finding the human underneath. A child can do that. Oh, absolutely. You know, you should have so... seen me before I had my son. <laughs> <laughs> totally kidding. Totally kidding. But no, you're right. 100%. You're yeah, right. I think it can. So that could definitely weigh on Bryce and, mm -hmm. and wake him up to his past. I think, if anything, a child could be a source for change. Mm -hmm. So it'd be interesting to see how that influences Bryce yeah. and changes his perception of things. Right. But, um, and yeah. it's hard to picture Bryce going to like. OBGYN appointments, <laughs> you know? Oh my god, just a complete 180. Yeah, but Hamas that's, classes, he's no, just like Lamar. super supportive <laughs> parent to be. Yeah, but you know, that is funny because like <laughs> it would it would really force force the character to kind of tap into this sensitive side. I feel like he's got this this wall up as well and he has a lot of emotions that he just doesn't let yeah. come to the surface. You know, he's he's kind of been abandoned in a sense mm -hmm. from his parents. They're never there, they're never involved. So he's sort of been left to his own devices. You either become your parents or right. you do the exact opposite Absolutely. to give your kid better. And and it could be interesting to see how either of those sort of facets yeah. influence Bryce and a potential kid. Yeah. Right, right. We'll do a spin-off series of Bryce Can and you Chloe imagine? raising a baby. I, that would be like actually kind of amazing, raising a baby. <laughs> 2019 on Netflix. Yeah. Look, look it for has it. like it's some kidding. Very like generic title. Yes. Like two teens and a baby. Yeah, you know? that's it. And it's like a multicam sitcom. Yes, yeah, it's, sitcom. <laughs> it's just real awkward from beginning to end. Totally separate. No, from the but show. I mean yeah. it is kind of cool. The idea that there is this this huge announcement with like two seconds left of the show and all the yeah. possibilities that could stem from that. Yeah, anything could yeah. happen. Yeah. So another fan theory is okay. Bryce does have to leave, and there he make he makes a point of saying. See you on the field to Dempsey. Yes, yeah. yes. So it's like, okay, well, now is that also kind of setting up a potential for a different kind of conflict as well? And also, if he leaves and you're at a different school, I'm getting really excited about this. Okay. Now we have the possibility of introducing all new characters as well. True. Mm -hmm. That's true. Mm -hmm. Then you have a whole other football team that you're playing against. Yeah. Who anything could happen. Yeah. All right. So um, Selena Gomez, obviously. Yep. Um, that was kind of you know for a lot of people who hadn't read the book, mm -hmm. we we learned about the show through through Selena. She fell in love with the project right. and that kind of thing. And so she made an announcement before season two that she obviously wasn't gonna have as much involvement. You know, so how's the dynamic with her? Is she like around? Does she visit? Yeah, she pops in and out. Um, she and her mother Mandy Tiffy were kind of instrumental in getting it made. Yeah. Um, they were super fans of the book. They're the ones I think who took it to Netflix to be like, right. hey, we really want to do something with this. So they were kind of that uh, that power that lifted it off the ground initially. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, they, they pop in, check in. I know Mandy is, uh, Skypes into all of the table reads to listen right. to everything. Awesome. Um, I, Selena might, I'm not sure. We can't see that then. They can only see us. Right. But yeah, they come up, they visit for dinners, and they'll take the cast out and we'll talk about characters and story development and yeah. that sort of stuff. So, so they're still semi-active and pop in and out. But moving forward, I have no idea. Yeah, what, where it goes from there. Do. She's busy. She's got a lot of stuff mm, going on. Kind of, so, you know. You know. Um, yeah, but okay, but that's awesome. I love hearing that. That's really cool. And obviously, everyone else loves hearing that too. <laughs> so you have to wonder how you guys as a cast handles like the day to day back and forth with each other offset right. when the stuff you're dealing with onset 
is so heavy, you know? Yeah. It's It's gotta be kind of difficult too, but hopefully you guys make time for laughs. We absolutely do. I think it's important just for mental health and whatnot, mm -hmm. dealing with such dark topics. We filmed this show in Northern California, kind of out in the middle of, I wanna say nowhere, in the middle of not a lot. Yeah, oh, I like that, okay. <laughs> uh, so we sort of had to kind of bind together right. just for support to be like, hey, there's not a whole lot to do, so we'll just hang out all mm -hmm. the time, mm -hmm. I guess. And we do. That's we, awesome. We hang out quite a bit. Yay. So we've all, we've all sort of become a family, which is great. And I also think it helps the onset dynamic, even if we're, you know, playing characters who despise each other in the show. Right. Being friends offset makes it easier, I feel like, to jump into the hate in a, yeah. in a weird way, just because yeah. there's there's more permission and trust. So you know the other person doesn't see you mm -hmm. as a villain. Mm -hmm. So you have that sort of, uh, that foundation to be able to just go for anything yeah, and totally. know that it doesn't matter. So it's really cool. We have a great dynamic. We hang out a lot. Lots of cast dinners and hangouts and small parties and gatherings. And I they're love amazing. it. I love that's that's awesome. Yeah. So like when you guys got new characters this season too, how, how do you get them ready for what they're in for? Like, hey, by the way, this yeah. is, you know, this is what's this is what's coming and it's a lot and it's heavy. Right. I mean, you got girlfriend, you know? Yep. Brand new. Yep, I sure do. Brand new girlfriend, brand new teammates that we haven't seen before. Right, right. Uh, lots of great cast members. And fortunately, they were all fantastic. It could yeah. have gone either way, but they all sort of seamlessly integrated into the That's cast, awesome. into the family, I mean, it shows, which was for awesome. Sure. That's good. That's good to know. But yeah, they're fantastic. They just we, they just became part of the family. Also came to all the hangouts and whatnot. Some of the recurring characters, they fly back and forth. So yeah. it was when they were in town, they would, right. we'd all get together and hang out. And I can't imagine like what it must be like for a new cast member and just to kind of yeah. join this this monster of a, of a franchise now, you know? That's very true, because when we all started, it wasn't anything, and we had no idea if it was gonna launch, or if it was gonna peter out, or what was gonna happen. Just we became just, like the biggest thing we on TV. We were just filming a show, and then, yeah, and then it just launched. So yeah, I think we, we talked to some of the newcomers, and um, they were a little nervous, I think, a couple of them, yeah. that at the start, just joining the ranks of this new, huge, I guess, Absolutely. phenomenon. Yeah. There was a funny story for one of the characters. I don't have scenes with him, but uh, he's one of the athletes on the track team, and I think it was him. I remember Wardrobe telling me this story. He showed up to set not knowing that he was filming 13 Reasons Why. Oh my goodness. Because we have like a code name for the show and everything. Oh, that's and right. And his agent told him that it's actually 13 Reasons Why, and he thought that his agent was joking. He was like, haha, very funny. Showed up to set, saw Dylan walk by, and he was like, that's Clay. Oh my gosh, that's Brandon who plays Justin. What? Hold on a second. And then like... That is so funny! Flipped out on his first day like, oh crap, my mother did reasons why. Yeah, that's really amazing. Funny. I think that's hysterical, yeah. That's gotta be like the best realization <laughs> ever. Just, yeah. You're like, score! Yes! That's awesome, I love it. So who's the biggest like jokester prankster on set? Probably like me, Tim who plays Monty, Ross who plays Dempsey, y yeah. Maybe probably us, keep, probably us three. Yeah, you gotta keep it. You gotta keep it light, and you gotta keep yeah. it fun when you're not filming. Exactly. Yeah. Ex someone's gotta. Somebody has Somebody's to gotta for sure. Keep moral high on set. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, all right. Uh, closing thoughts. Okay. Okay. What has been the greatest thing about portraying Bryce in Thirteen Reasons Why? I think the way it sort of changes how you look at, at life and the world around you. Mm -hmm. I think I had an understanding of what was going on with these dark topics, rape and sexual assault and, and suicide and depression, but being part of a show and having to do more research on yeah. it, you realize how much of an epidemic it is mm -hmm. uh, and how important it really is. And it, I, I don't know, it just sort of resonates in a different way and you become more passionate about all the issues. I'm, I'm quicker now to monitor how I do things, how I say right, things. Right. I, I tend to be more considerate and, and try and come from a place of love more mm -hmm, now mm -hmm. when I can. So yeah, it, it's 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 really cool. It's the rare opportunity to play a role. Yeah, absolutely. And, and give it sort of breath, but in return it also kind of gives yeah. you something, which is kind of neat. I mean, like speaking personally, I have a 16 year old brother and it's definitely opened up a lot of conversation that nice. I never thought I would have with my 16 year old oh, brother so who awesome. likes to pretend like I'm the lamest person on the face of the earth, even though he knows I'm cool. <laughs> but um, but yeah, no, he and I have talked about a lot, a lot like, a lot of more challenging topics, you That's know? That's awesome. And also, one thing that was really cool and we were filming a bunch of stuff here for 13, 13 Reasons Why, like recaps and stuff, I was online and I saw somebody who said, you know, the show gets a lot of backlash, but 
One of the worst things in, in that happened in season two actually happened in my high school. Okay, so we were reading these scripts. You know, again, as I said, we get them sort of one at a time or yeah. two at a time. We read the last episode. We, all of us, we were all calling each other. We were talking as soon as we saw each other. We're like, what? What is going on with this one yeah. scene? This seems like a, a, lot, a lot and sort of out of left field. What's going on? So we asked Yorkie, just uh, Brian Yorkie, our showrunner, mm -hmm. out of curiosity, mm -hmm. like, what's what's the thinking behind this? And he goes, uh, this is going on in high schools. We just found out, blew our minds as well. But yeah, this stuff's going on and happening. Mm -hmm. I don't know on a regular basis, yeah, but it's it's, it's, horrible. it's certainly prevalent yeah. in these high schools. And we were all like, holy How cow. is this possible? How is this happening? Like down the street from where we live, the high school I was that we went baffled. to. It's such a grotesque act. I think it shocked all of us. But we're like, look, I mean, we do a show that doesn't shy away from the issues. Right. We haven't in season one. We haven't so far in season two. So if this stuff's going on, uh, do we have it. to address it. Address it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And people are gonna be upset by it, rightfully so. Be upset. Be upset watching it. Be upset that it's happening mm -hmm. in high schools. I, uh, it's it's so grotesque. I. I can't believe yeah. that it's going on in, yeah. in high schools, that kids are doing this to other kids. Yeah, and when I saw that tweet, I was like, oh, okay. And then you realize the importance of, of addressing things that people, how do you how do you bring that up, you know? It's like one of those things that's really difficult to address. So I applaud you guys. I feel like you're doing a fantastic you. job. Thank Fingers you. crossed that Bryce, you know, is like a little bit nicer at least. We'll see. <laughs> Maybe like drop a hint to every once in a while, Justin, seriously. Really though, you guys are doing a fantastic job. You. You're doing a fantastic job. Um, and I really, I just cannot wait. and know everybody out there also can't wait to see where this show goes. Yeah, hopefully more. Yeah, hopefully. It'd be nice. I agree. I'd like to know what happens Me out too. of my own curiosity. Yeah. Click left to find out how all the characters are connected in 13 Reasons Why Season 2, or click right for all of the Season 2 Easter eggs.